Hello there. So now let's move to the first tutorial. Okay, so there is a lot to cover. Okay, you have your, your slides. You will see that this one is divided divided into parts. Okay, first we're going to run a blindfold. I'm just going to show you some stuff. And then we're going to explain all the dictionary input files, dictionary stuff in more in detail. Okay, so here you have it. I'm not going to go through every single slide that you have here. Maybe I will go back to some very specific things later. You can follow this, okay, later. But let, let's run the, 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 this first case. So first, let's start, and just to remind you, at this point, it's clear that we need to have this data structure always, okay? So now we're going to see what files do we, do we have inside each directory and how this mesh is created, okay? So always remember this, this regarding the case, always you need to have zero, const zero constant and system. Uh, so also in this slide screen, you see that this PTOFC, this is pointing to the location where you extracted all the tutorials, okay? So remember that you can put it anywhere you want this tutorials, okay? So there is no restriction on that, but try to keep things in order, okay? No, don't throw everything in the desktop, okay? So find a specific location. So the first tutorials, this one probably you already know, and this is a classical validation case in CFD. So we have the flow inside a, a cavity. So imagine that we have this cavity, you have walls here, you have your boundary layer, everything, and you have this <coughs> wall here, this velocity here, and you are going to get a recirculation here, okay? So this is what we're going to do. The Reynolds is low, okay? 100 is a laminar case. It is also a 2D case. And we have plenty of validation data to compare. So let's see how to run this case and see some basic post-processing and other functions in OpenFund. So the tools that we're going to use, and remember that there is not a single executable in OpenFund are these ones, no? So we have block mesh, which will be the meshing tool. Okay, so first, I'm going to run, and then we're going to talk about all the input files uh, <clears throat> and look at like, the specific dictionaries. Then we have Icophone, which is the specific solver that we're going to use. And after we have a solution, we have Palaview to visualize. Also, we can do some a posterior sampling. And here we have this function object. Okay, so this is online sampling. Okay, while you are running, you can sample it. Okay, so we're going to see <clears throat> all these steps. So this will be for any case will be something like this that you need to do, but you will need to adapt your cases. Uh, I want to remind you also that we're going to use Icophone, these solvers, okay? So remember that there is not a single executable in OpenFone, so according to what you need, want to do, you need to identify what is the specific solver or utility that you, that you need to use, okay? In this case, we're going to use Icophone, but I don't recommend you to use this solver, okay? Because this is a basic solver a solver for laminar and compressible on a study solver. So it doesn't take models or advanced post-processing capability. So it's very limited. So for this case that we have Reynolds 100 is okay. But have in mind, know that you have a lot of limitations. So it's better to use piece of phone or pimp and phone. Okay, these are the solver for incompressible on a study solver. So we're going to revisit where to look for that information later, okay? But just for this case, and maybe in another case, we're going to use Icophone, but have in mind that it's very limited, doesn't have many <coughs> modeling capabilities. So we have this mesh, okay? So later in chapter, in model six, we're going to talk about the final volume method and so on specific, but this is the mesh. So imagine that in each cell, in the cell center, you find the solution. And that's all, okay? So we have here pressure field and your velocity mag magnitude. This is what we should get, okay? And here we're comparing so in a reference. You have the paper here. Also, we'll show you the, <clears throat> the cases. I, I put also the paper so you can compare and see what we have, okay? So this is, see that we're sampling in these lines that you have here, we're sampling a specific component of velocity or whatever you want to sample. And that's all, okay? So we're going to see that. So as you see, there are many steps, many, many things to do. So you have the this case located in this directory. Also in, the, in each directory, I will show you, you're going to find a few script files. Now name it like run all, run mesh, whatever. So these files you can use, okay? For instance, you can use run all to run automatically everything, okay? So if you are familiar with OpenFund, just go ahead, launch the file, and it will do everything automatically. But if you are not familiar, I advise, I advise you to open it and look at this text, okay? You are going to see the sequential steps, what we're doing, because we need to call different different applications. I will show you that later. Uh, also, 
in our open phone installation, the one that I'm going to use in this training, you will see that I will, each time I open a new wi window, I will type this in the terminal because I need to source open phone, okay? So this is my installation, how, how I chose to, to do it. Is you follow the, 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 the instructions in, in the open from what side probably is differently, it doesn't matter, but this is my choice, okay? And also I have Python, it's not compulsory, but I recommend you to have it also. In my case, I'm using Anaconda Python, I'm following in a similar way that I need to source Python, okay, each time that I'm going to use. So if you see me typing this command, it, it is because I'm sourcing those those libraries, okay? Okay, so here you have the steps, the, the, the steps. So you will see some post-processing. I will show you this one. So let's see. Let me boom, 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 boom. Okay, so you see there is a lot of a lot to cover. Okay, new plot. Boom, boom, dun, 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 dun. Okay, so let's move. Okay, so later we go. So you see here that I have my. <clears throat> My tutorial, I extracted everything here, and we have it here in 101 OF and Cavity 2D. Okay, so remember your compulsory directories are zero and constant and system. Everything that you're going to see here is optional. Okay, so see that in docs you have the paper. Remember, I mentioned that I will put your paper. So here you have this paper and this documentation, and see that you can compare. There are some results here. Okay, so by no means, also, this is the only. A reference regarding this driven cavity. There are many articles. So this is a numerical one, but I, they are also experimental. New plots. When you see the folder, means that there are some scripts to run new plots. New plots is another plotting utility in OpenFun. Uh, sorry, in Linux. Okay, so m I think it's installed by default in. in <clears throat> in every Linux operating system, but if you don't have it when you are installing open phone, it is one of the requirements. So you you should have it. So I'm going to show you some basic steps and actually as you go here you will see that here new plot when you see this prong here it means that we're inside new plot we're plotting. So we're going to see how to plot this in new plot. And these are the scripts I mentioned. Okay, so this is how to run <coughs> all the simulations. So as you open this one, run all will run everything. So see that this one will call this to a script. So as you enter into the other scripts, you will see some <coughs> different steps. So see that these are the steps that, that you are, we are following. So as I say, if you are familiar with OpenFone, go ahead, run this automatically. If you are not familiar, my advice is to open and type these steps sequentially in your terminal, okay? Just to get a uh, use, not to get that muscle memory. So see that here we're running this command, later we're going to see what it's doing. This is doing meshing, checking mesh quality, and running the solver, okay? So this is a, a, a shell script, bash script, so when you see this symbol here, means that it is commented, okay? This line is commented. So I'll have that in mind. Okay, so let me open a terminal window. In my case, I, I can go like this. I will launch my terminal window. Remember OF9, I will load open for an environment and I'm ready to go. So I will run the case. So to run those automatic, automatic scripts. So I will run first this one and then this one. So this is the simulation and this one will do the sampling. You can go and run this one, it will run all the steps, but I would like to do it sequentially, okay? So SH run solver, and that's all, okay? You are ready to go. Remember, you need to load open phone in, in your environment, okay? Otherwise it will give you an error, okay? It will tell you that that command doesn't exist. So press enter and see that it's running, okay? We're, talk, we're going to talk about all this information that you see in the screen. Okay, so important. Let me go here and to show you something here as well. So when you see this, this pipeline means that you are concatenating, okay, commands. So you are running block mesh and then concatenate this with this command called T. Okay, so T what it's doing is showing you the information in the screen but also saving that information into this file. Okay, this is a user giving, you give this name to this file. So user, I like to call it like this, log.icophone, okay? So as you see here, you now you have a, <coughs> a record of what you have done. So you, this is a text file you can open, and you will have all this information there that then you can use it to post-processing or also to debugging, no? <coughs> 
to find problems. And if you have problems, it's likely the first thing is that I'm going to, to ask you, you know, please send me your log file because I need to see this log file to see what will happen, okay? This is for troubleshooting effects. So this exact output that you see in your screen, you're going to have it there, okay? So when you see, always I will say that when I run commands, I like to do it like this. In part, important is the solver, maybe for block mesh and check mesh, you, you don't need to do that, okay? So let me go a little bit, phone con cl uh, clean tutorial. So as you type ls, see that you have your solution. So as you type phone, clean tutorials, it will clean the case. So that is what it's doing. So before running, I'm cleaning. Then I'm running this command block mesh. Block mesh, okay. So there is a very nice utility. So let me show you again. So I know block mesh is a meshing tool, but remember that you can go to the source code and look for that to see what is happening. So I know that it's an utility, it's mesh, and here you have a generation and see block mesh. So as you open this, see that remember that always you have a description here. Okay, more multi-block generator and some basic instruction how to use it. Okay. So always look at your source code, you can find that information. So as you go check mesh, I know it's another utility for mesh generation. Now it's for checking the mesh quality, so that one should be, I always forget where is that located. So you go here, you will find it somewhere. It should be mesh also, advanced, okay. Conversion, generation, manipulation. Okay, see manipulation, check mesh. And as you open this one, go check this here. See that is going to show you the description, what it's doing, and then have some some basic steps, instruction how to use it. The same will be with the with, with the solver. So let me go here. Also, let me open here. Icofon I'm piece of so I know that this is an incompressible case that I'm running. So remember, solvers everything is divided according to the physics. So as you go incompressible, see that you have it here. So as you go Icofon. Here you have a description. So you know that what is, that solver is doing. The same will be with, let's say, simple phone. Okay. So see that a steady solver for the compressor and turbulent flow. So now you can use models, turbulence models, but this is a steady solver. Okay. So you go to piece of phone will be pretty much the same, but now it's transient. Okay. You are solving the time variable as well. So this is how you, you get familiar with the solvers. However, if you don't feel like you want to go here and explore this source code, there is a very nice command called phone info. Okay. You type minus hell and it was going to give you some help how to use it. So you type phone info and the name of the program, library, application, whatever. So look at that icophone. It will tell you basically the location of the, of the source code the description and here is going to give you some examples. So as you go here, you will see some basic examples how to use this one. So you see ecophone, you will see pisophone, see that is giving you the description. You will do the same phone info for instance block mesh. Oops. It will be block mesh. See that it's giving you a description. So let me choose one. See that description exactly what you have in the source code. So I highly recommend you to use this tool instead of going, going to the source code, you are not comfortable with that, with that. No, it's a very powerful tool. It will access all the source code. So if you are looking for the specific keywords, whatever, so you go phone info, let's say later, we're going to see that this consistent. Okay. So see that it didn't find that. Okay. But let me go for instance, zero gradient which is something that we use. Let me choose one and see that it's giving you some information. Okay. So I recommend you to use when you are lost, use, use this tool and it will give you that basic information. Okay. So this is just to get it started. Uh, also from time to time in the case directories. Okay. Let me go before no talking about the case. You are going to find this readme first. So sometimes there in this file, you will have some general comments. Okay, so in this case, you have some links to YouTube to show you some physical experiments. What is this driven cavity? But I think you have the, the idea. Okay, so let's run the case. 
Okay, so now we know how what are those solvers that we're using and everything. So let's let's rerun. Okay, run. I will go solver. So it's running the solver, it's doing the steps that we did just that we just did first meshing, check mesh quality, is running the solver. Okay, and now there is another script called sampling. This one is doing some sampling and comparing to some reference solution. And see that you have it here. Okay. So we have a reference solution and the current open phone solution. Okay. So what just happened there, and just to show you, let me open this one. We haven't opened this one yet. See that this one is calling this utility post process. Again, remember you can go for an info post process. Okay, and there is no, okay, sometimes it happens that there is no information. So nothing found about this. Okay, probably was my mistake. I put I put two S. Uh, so one. And here you have some information about this post process. Okay, and some tutorials, some examples that comes with OpenFone. Okay, so that is how you can find information. Okay, so it's running post process. Later, there is a chapter dedicated to post processing. Don't worry about that. But we're going to see that this command will open this input file. So this is an optional input file, okay? It's not compulsory. And it will check only the latest time. So see that I very descriptive, these flags. Let me minus latest time, it will go and will check the solution in 50, okay? So as you go here, insistent, see that you have this sample date. And this is the one that is going to do the sampling of this variable in this set that I call L1, L2. This is a horizontal and vertical line. As you recall fr from these slides, okay, we have these two lines. So basically sampling there. Okay, so we're doing this in open form. We can also do it using Paraview, which is the post processing utility, okay? So we have this, this dictionary. We're not going to open it for the moment. This is optional to run in parallel. Then also later we go into details. And this is the one used for generating the meshes. So this is the, the numerics, okay? Then let me clean again the, the case, okay, that we rerun. So you see, this is a very fast case, by the way. So remember, in zero, you have initial boundary conditions. So in this case, we're solving two variables, velocity and pressure. You know, in open form, velocity is capital U, pressure is <coughs> P. If you are solving for a new variable, for instance, for temperature, T will be capital T, or whatever, okay? So the, according to the variables that you are solving, you, are, you need to define that. So let me open these two files and let's see what we have. As you see, these are human readable files, okay? These are in ASCII format, okay? So when using JEDIT, you can use the editor of your preference. So see that you have a header. This header, you will have it consistently in every input file. So do not modify this header and be careful that this set header needs to correspond to what you are doing. So see that here you are, the object that you are dealing with is U, and see that it's a class ball vector field. U is a vector. As you go to P, see that it's a scalar, ball scalar field. So you have to be careful because sometimes you do copy and paste and you forget that if you are working with a scalar, this should be a scalar and so on. Okay, so this is for these variables. Let me go now to constant. Transport properties, okay, this one is, is optional. This is where you define new kinematic visc viscosity. And see that, again, you have the header, but it's different, the class is different. So see that, be careful with this header, okay? If you are doing copy and paste, be careful that to, to, to have the right header. So in all, usually in all tutorials, the header is right, otherwise it open for it will complain. We're going to talk about that, that later. So see that now transform models. So this solver that we're going to, to, to use, it let you choose between different models for the, <coughs> for the viscosity. So we're using a Newtonian model. There are many models implemented. New kinematic viscosity. These are the units, okay? Later we're talking about that. This is the value. So see that these dimensions, Okay, so later we talk in details about that. And then we go into system and let's see just the compulsory files, okay, which are control SV skin SV solution. So see that in control did you have this basic command. So again, 
you have your header remember don't don't mess with that one okay so very intuitive to 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 get to get it right so see that here the name of the application so this is not compulsory but in any case it just put the right application so we're using icofon start from this is a starting time okay so we're going to start from a start time you define your start time zero so we're going to start our computation from zero you can start from 100 it's up to you okay but if you start here from 100 be careful that directory 100 must must exist and you need to have these variables there okay usually we start from zero okay then stop at end time end time 50 so it will run 50 seconds this is my delta t time step right control run time so it means write the solution every one second so it, here you have many options so we're going to see how to find th those options but you have many options this one reserve the uh, <clears throat> is concerned to the solutions that you want to keep so if you put zero you are going to keep all the solution folders so one two three if you put t two you're going just to keep the last two solution folders okay later we play with this right format write the solution in as in ASCII or binary format i recommend you to use binary format but here i'm going to use ascii because i'm going to open the files and we're going to to change things okay but go for binary format because it's faster and the files are, are smaller the size okay so it's, in particular that is important for large cases small cases you can go with ascii but in binary okay the, the difference in binary is that the file is not anymore human readable okay there is a, no, a lot of information that you cannot read but the basic information can be modified okay so for instance you go into you you can modify this basic information but there is a lot of information that is not human readable okay so that this is it okay so more commands later we're going to see this one and here we have function objects something that is called function object in open form which is monitor so you monitor your solution stuff like minimum maximum value average values residuals things like that so here i'm just putting some basic function object later we talk about this so as you go sb skin is the numerics okay so remember that you are solving some equations in this case we have momentum and, and pressure equation so you need to give the discretization plus time derivative no so every term that is appearing in your equations you need to define okay to say how to solve that so see that ddt schemes refer to time derivative so i'm using this method there are many methods implemented in open front later we talk about that gradients and your equations you have gradients so this is how you solve gradients using this method so default means for every single variable that where you have the uh, time, use this method. So see that default Gauss linear, but also you can do it uh, in a selective way. Grad P, because I know that I have the gradient of pressure, you can use this method, okay? So in this case, it's the same, but you can have different methods. Then divergence, we have the divergence in our equations, and this is critical, this variable. Okay, here it's always recommended to use a method that is at least second order accurate. Okay, so this method is circle and order accurate. So see that default none, meaning that you need to explicitly define those terms. Okay, the terms that the divergence. So this divergence velocity, this is related to the Reynolds stresses, which is not used in the solver with the solver that we are using. Laplacian, in our equations, we have Laplacian. We are using this method. So default for every single Laplacian that appears, use this method. But you can do it also in a selective way. My advice is always to do it like this, okay? Interpolation, how you interpolate from cell center to face center. So linear, usually it's okay, but there are different methods, but there is no, my personal opinion, there is no reason to go for different methods. And this is related to the Laplacian, okay? These are gradients of phases. So usually you use the same methods. So if you put here limited one, put it like this. So this is what you're doing, how you are discretizing each term appearing in your equations, and then you go to SV solution. So this is the uh, when, when you crunch numbers. Here you assemble a linear system. Now you need to solve that linear system, okay? So this is how you solve that linear system. So this is the solver for pressure, velocity, and so on. Okay, so see that pressure, we're using this method. Again, there are many methods available. I'm not going to tell you that this is the best one or this is, this is the best one. It's very problem dependent. So, I go, But later, I'm going to give you some standard practices. So P, this is not used in this solver, but if you use a solver that will ask for this variable and you don't define this variable, 
OpenFoam will let you know we're going to work on that. For velocity, we're using this solver. So see that this is the tolerance. So the solver will iterate until the tolerance of that linear system that you are solving is equal to this. Okay. So you have absolute and relative to tolerance. Okay. The relative is the difference between iterations. PISO, these are entries related to the pressure velocity coupling. So ICOFON use this PISO coupling. So these are corrections. Again, chapter A model six, we're going to see this correction, but this is just, it's an iterative method. So you are iterating just to improve the computation. Okay, that's all. So you iterate more, it's clearly that it's likely you are going to get a better solution, but it takes more time. And then relaxation factors that later we talk in detail. What is this one? But for the moment here, or on the steady solvers, these values that you see here are okay. So this is it, okay? This is how you define the problem. So let, let me run again. If I go now block mesh, see that I generated the mesh. So now there is this tool called Paraphon. And again, it's not a tool, actually it is an script. You go find info Paraphon, and it will tell you a little bit, so on this, it will give you a, a description. So see that it's telling you, but let's launch. So this is the, the tool that it will let you visualize the solution, your mesh, your domain. So in this case, I just generated the mesh, but I don't have a solution. So we can only see, okay, the mesh. So see that. We have these commands here. You can choose different things. So just the surface, or you can see the edges also, or wireframe. Okay. You can change the colors you don't like. By the way, likely in your case, the background will be gray. In my case, it's white because I already changed it. So you can change that. You can go here, edit, settings. And here, you can change that. Also, probably you can go here. You have these advanced options. Click here, go down, and you can change the color. Okay, so I think likely will be like this that you have it. Okay, in my case, I prefer to have it white. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, let me go here. Okay, doesn't matter later. So see that we have this. This is our mesh. It is a 2D mesh. So even if the case is 2D, you need to do 3D. Okay. So see that here you only have one cell, so it's 2D. Okay. But this is another requirement that even if the case is 2D, it must be a uh, solid. Okay. So this is how we visualize. So something important that when we create the mesh. Okay, and now let me talk about the specifics. So in this case, so you have this slice, and let me move a little bit here to the a deeper view, you know, to my first open phone case. Okay, and let's talk about this block mesh utility. So see what I mentioned about the header and everything. Be careful. Okay, this is about Unix. I will go back to that later. But here, let me talk about this block mesh. Okay, so this is a very. There are many ways to generate the mesh. You can import it from an external tool. You can use block mesh or another measure. So this dictionary is organized like this. So this is tricky to understand. Okay. So my best advice, you have there <coughs> some additional slides, deck of slides, given details. Later also in mesh, and we're going to talk more about this one. But see that here, what, what you are doing. So use this one as a template. And what we're doing is that See here in vertices is where you define the coordinate of this vertices. So this is a square domain. It's quite easy to do, but it's, you can imagine that if you have complex domains, you need to define all the vertices connectivity. So it can be tricky, but basically see that vertices give coordinate. So basically here you are declaring variables and using variables. So you do, the, you use the symbol dollar and the name and you use the variable. That's all. You can also directly write down he, this value so here, but I prefer to do it in this. You do it in this way, it's kind of parametric. Okay, it's up to you. So I see that all these, you declare variables. This is an scaling factor. This compared to meters probably is a little bit confusing, but it's just an scaling factor. Put one, it is one to one. You put two, everything here will be multiplied by two. Doesn't mean that you are converting from inches to meters or or whatever. So here you have this explanation also later. So see that you give coordinate of eight vertices and then 
you need to give connectivity okay so then you define here you see that this is a variable and here we're defining the number of cells that we're, we're, we're using okay so 20 cells in x and y direction y one cell in the set direction is 2d okay and we move so probably i think i'm missing yep 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 i'm missing one slice here so just okay let me go here and i will fix that so that will be here so this is this line i'm missing okay so it's exactly the same but it's missed there and why okay so bum 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 so pretty much the same okay so see that then here we have this this is to do some 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 in this case we don't have it okay this is on in, in line computation so we go in the, into details in the in this tutorials we're going to see so let's say that this doesn't exist for the moment and see that here if i move here see that now you have this new block here is where you define the connectivity of these vertices okay so you have the explanation there how it's connected so you have these vertices that you gave in order no this location they, they must follow in a specific ordering so be careful follow what is written there so you give the connectivity but see how is see how is this connectivity given you have using this reference system vertex 0 1 2 and 3 0 1 2 and 3 0 1 2 and 3 are connected and then you move to the front face vertices 4 5 6 and 7 okay so have to be very careful you need to give it in sequential order you cannot go from 4 to 6 because it will give you an error okay so be careful with that here you define the number of cells so remember that we declared these variables in our case previously was 2021 so it's like putting here and this is to an extraction function okay so that's all and then you have edges here later we're going to talk about this one here we are not using that and then we define boundary so let me go to the previous slides okay this one so I, I will fix this 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 missing slide you, you will have it the, the missing here between this one so boundary you give name to the patches to the surfaces so see that boundary and these are guess what related to the vertices that you created so see that you created here vertex 0 1 2 3 so how that face is connected so we have a fake con connecting 3 7 6 2 see here that will be this one 3 7 6 2 okay so this face and you are giving to that face this name moving wall tight wall you're going to later we talk about this type then you have another face fixed walls okay these surfaces so as you go back you will see that are this this and this one and then you have empty front and back you give this name okay so this is how this is what we just did okay we created the mesh okay so now that we know that we have a mesh okay and we know the name of the surfaces we can assign boundary conditions okay so just to explain now so as you go to ump see that these names that you see here are, are coming from the mesh generation when you generate it see that okay see here that that missing line you have it here okay so basically you are putting this information here and you have that block okay and then you are con connecting vertices okay to <coughs> we, we're using this connectivity okay next needs to be the vertices remember needs to be in contiguous order okay so you cannot jump from one to the other that's the only requirement so now that we have this and we know the name of the patches you can assign boundary conditions so you just give this is basically a copy and paste now so we know that u is a vector field so this is okay these are the dimensions and let me go back here okay to talk about dimensions okay if open front is fully dimensional and you need to give the right dimensions otherwise it will complain so see that you always will find when you have variables these lines like this that is telling you dimensions okay so it's something like this 
so it's easier okay let me go here okay so see that you're going to find square brackets and then seven different entries okay so entry one corresponds to mass length time temperature quanti uh, quantity moles current and luminous intensity let me know if you use this one no, i have it i have never ever used this this unit okay in candela so this is what you have okay kilometer second kelvin moles amperes and candela okay so that's all how you define so as you go here see that meters seconds minus one okay meters per second you define the units this one corresponds to initial conditions so in the domain and i will launch again parafilm okay and let me put like this see the mesh that we have so inside the domain so see that we have different patches or surfaces where we need to assign boundary conditions internal field refers to the initial co conditions to get a start at the solver you need to give an initial condition so here we're telling that at the beginning everything is zero 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 okay it's clear the closer you are to the final solution the faster the convergence will be but we never know a priori that final solution that's why we're doing this so be careful when you give these initial conditions now that you need to be as close as possible so if you are very far from that final solution, it will take longer or it might converge to a different solution or it might diverge. Okay, later we play with that. So see that moving wall, I know that moving wall and here you can access that information. So see here in mesh parts, you access those patches. Okay, so see that you select one fixed value, so it should be like this. So moving wall will be this. So in this one, and recall the problem definition, you want a velocity of one, so fixed value. So one of the things that I think is very confusing in OpenFun is assigning boundary conditions because there are many, many of them and people t tend to get confused. So my advice is just looking at the basic groups. Also later we work on that, that it will be there is ledge, Newman, boundary conditions. So there is ledge is a fixed value, you impose a value. Newman is a gradient, okay? So the zero gradient is a Newman. So those are the basic ones that you need to rely on. Then you will have symmetry, periodicity, and some other crazy boundary conditions. Again, just to remind you, so as you see that, that file and you see fixed value, see that you, you have the phone info command. So phone info fixed value. Um, I misspelled it. So fixed value. See that it's telling you that I found a lot of stuff. Let me know which one do you want to, to, to check. So let's say that I want to check in one. And see that it's telling you what it's doing, how it's used. Okay. And see that <coughs> it's giving you also some tutorials that, that you can go but also you have the location of the source code. So if you want, you can go there and you open, and this is the actual implementation of that boundary condition. Again, our goal here is not to, to get to master programming C++, it's just to get practical. Okay, so what we did here in moving wall, that patch was assigned this one, 100, fixed walls. Let's see what are fixed walls. These are fix walls and let me hide this one these are walls where we have boundary layer now so these are slip walls okay no slip walls sorry so fix what put, put fixed value uniform zero 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 okay and then we have front and back so these two so remember that the case is is, is 2d but we in OpenFun is fully 3D. So if you are going to do 2D and even 1D, you need to define here in this direction one, one, one cell. So see that when you have these two surfaces, is we use this type of patch empty, means that OpenFun will know, okay, this is a 2D case and I don't need to deal with 3D stuff. That's all. So this type, this is called a constraint patch type, okay? because the, the value that it takes is always the same. Instead, these ones are not constrained. It can change depending on the value that you give. So you will see that you go to P, this is empty, 
Okay, but the others here zero grading is Newman, as I mentioned. So it's a Newman boundary condition. So you can check. So it's the derivative zero grading. Okay, the derivative equal to zero in the direction. That's all. Extrapolate the values to make it easier. See that it is an scalar zero. Be careful of something that I want to point out, and it's very important. Look at the the dimensions of of pressure. It's meter square second square, which is, does not correspond to Pascal's. Pascal's are should be one 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 minus two, if I will recall here. So it is does not correspond to Pascal's because for incompressible solvers, and be careful, remember this. This is only for incompressible solvers. The pressure that you are solving is pressure divided density. Okay, so that is explain it in this slides, and just let me go here. So basically, everything I'm saying, remember, I'm talking about many things, everything is described here, but just in particular, let me go on here. Okay, so see that dimensions, that this is only incompressible solver. It will be icophone, simple phone, piece of phone, pimple phone. As you move to the other solvers, like interphone, compressible solvers, whatever, multi-phase solvers, everything is Pascal. So, Remember that what you are solving is P divided density. So that's why you have these units. In reality, when the units will be Pascals and are like this, kilometer second square, okay? That is only incompressible solvers because you solve for, for these equations, okay? So always remember that incompressible solvers. And actually also be careful that this happens for any field variables that that use Pascal. So it's pressure, but also wall shear stress is expressed in Pascals. So be careful, wall shear stresses should be also P, P divided density when you are doing doing post processing. So using incompressible solvers, okay, you you always take the assumption that density is equal to one. Now you can do this dynamic similarity in incompressible solvers. But as you move to compressibles, that is not valid. And usually in compressors, we always say density one and just to compute Reynolds and normalize the stuff. I don't like to do it, but uh, just to make it clear, okay? So we define, okay, like this, Fix values, zero, zero gradient, zero gradient, extrapolate values. Okay, so take the value next to the wall, basically. Transfer properties. Okay, here we, want, we can define the model for the viscous model, okay? And then new the viscosity, kinematic viscosity. You have new and mu. Okay, so here we need to define <coughs> kinematic viscosity. Okay, mu divided density, density assuming that is one, you get this value. Okay, and look at the units. Okay, again. This should be meter uh, meter seconds, okay? Then that's all. Then we go to control, okay? So in this control, these are the, the parameters that is going to control time step later. We're going to see uh, important here this auction. In all the tutorials that we're distributing in this training, is set to true. This means that all these input files or dictionaries that how it's called in open fund open fund documentation. Uh, can be modified on the fly while while the server is, is running you can modify this okay so and that is very handy okay but you have to be also careful because if you do something wrong, wrong it might the solver might crash so see that you find this one these are the function objects or monitors so monitors that are calling open from function objects and everything is commented so i'm using jedit when you see everything in blue in jedit means that it's commented so it takes the comments it's, it takes in the same way as in C++. And again, everything I'm saying is explained here in the slide. So here you will see these comments that are, this is I'm telling about comments, okay? You have it there. Everything commented. And we're using this specific function object here to compute minimum and maximum values. So it's something called pack function objects. So this is something new in Open Phone 9, okay? In previous version, you, you didn't have it. So this is to make it easier now to put it. Honestly, I don't like it. I like to, to do it like this. So this is pack, meaning that it's compressed. No, it's, there is like a template. So see that you are calling this template and sampling this variable, and you are computing the minimum and maximum. Okay, mean, and this is for vector, min mac, taking the magnitude of the vector 
and compute that. However, I prefer to do it in the expanded way. Expanded way means that you define everything explicitly, the long way, which is this one. So see that, let me erase this comment here. And see that this is how it's done. So it's longer, but you see all the options, okay? But it's up to you how you do it. The, the output, it is exactly the same, puzzle thing. Okay, SV scheme, we talk about this, SV solution done, and that's all. So now let's rerun the case, okay? So I will do it manually. Block mesh. So this one is, we have a mesh. Check mesh is to check the mesh quality, okay? So I always recommend you to check this mesh quality. We'll check for quality but also for topology connectivity okay so is everything is okay here you are ready to run but sometimes it might give you some warning so you have to be careful that you might need to to fix something or adjust your, your numerics to get a good solution okay but if you get topology errors though that is critical you need to fix that because that is critical okay but see here that is giving you some statistics topology errors that if you have errors here must be fixed then here is telling you that you have three surfaces or patches where you can assign boundary conditions. We already did it in UMP. And then here it's, this is related to the mesh quality. So what you should look here in the important quantities is non-orthogonality and skewness. So later we're going to talk about these values, well, what, what are the minimum or maximum, the maximum acceptable values. Okay, but for the moment, so you see that everything is okay here, this mesh is perfect. Okay, and at this point we can run the solver. Icophone, and remember, always save your log file. So I will call it like this. And we're running. So let me use more is another co Linux command. So it's just to look at the files, okay, line by line. So see that I'm looking here at the log file. So the simulation is over, so see that it's end. But I'm looking at the log file. And just to show you that at the beginning, see that it's giving you here some information header, it's telling you, okay, I'm doing this and reading this variables, PU or whatever you have. And then starting the time loop in this case or iterative loop if, if it were a, a steady simulation. And see so that is computing here, minimum and maximum that we define. So time, advanced time step, using a time step of 0 0.01, as you recall, here, and compute the solution. And here you have your residuals, okay? So you have residual for velocity, UX, UY, the components, for pressure, and continuity errors, okay? So this error should be a small values, okay? It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, but it should be a small value. Compute minimum and maximum of field variables. See that you have location, this, and those are the coordinates, and so on. So this is what happens, okay? So in this case, you can imagine that this output will be different depending on the solver that you are using or the physics that you are dealing. So if you have more variables, here you are going to see more information, more variables, and so on. See here that you have the current number. Later, we're going to talk about this one in more detail. But this is very important because do, current number is a direct indication of stability and accuracy. So ideally, it should be around, around one, okay? But the solver that we're using, it is implicit, so there is no limitation, but ideally try to keep it around one, but you can go 10, 20, there is no problem, but for our proposals, let's keep it around one, okay? And that's also see that everything is reported, and here also see that you have execution time, the clock time, so you see this is a very fast simulation, okay? So it's a nice case that you can play around. So, we have a solution. Let's launch again Paraphone and let's visualize the solution, okay? Again, I want to remind you, everything I'm telling here is explaining details in the slides, okay? I know, I hope that I'm not going to miss anything. So see that now you go here and see that you have Paraphone. You can access patches here. So if you want to visualize everything, select here and you're seeing everything. Or if you want to see a specific patches, for instance, I just want to see front and back, this case is 2D. So or just the surfaces. So internal mesh corresponds to the inter internal cells, okay? So here you are going to see just the surfaces that bound that domain, which for us is more than enough. 
And see here that you have field variables. So you are computing UMP, you have some ad additional variables. So initially you give UMP, but then when the solver starts to run, it will need to compute some extra variables according to the numerics that you can access here. So usually you need to access those, you need your main variables, U, P, T, rho, whatever you have, okay? So see that is you want to visualize velocity, you go here and you access that. So I cannot access phi because you have it you haven't selected there so if you select fee you will be able okay you need to move in time and you will be able to visualize those okay so see that now we can visualize you so see that this is time zero so look at here that you have your let's call it bcr controls you have the scale here and remember that we say that all this is zero here velocity one in this direction so this is a vector and here you can access components see that there or you can go like this and everything zero okay so if you want to see now the solution you just go here and you can advance see that you have time and iteration and that's all you see your solution the same will be with pressure okay so you can put it normal to your screen and you go see here you and you have it here okay this is your solution okay so very important here that i want to mention just th this is advanced auction so i recommend you to to have this enabled now because there are many things that you can access on extra stuff okay so for instance so you have two options also to visualize the solution you have this dot and this square so just choose the square you get this. So remember that we're computing the solution in the cell centers and then it's uniform across the cell. So this is your actual solution. Okay, so since will become clear probably when we go into, into the model six that we talk about this, but this is your actual solution. When you choose this, this is interpolated value to look at, to, to, to look at nicer, to have a nicer solution, but this is your actual solution. So it's up to you which one you want to use. Usually this one looks nicer. So you want to change the color palette, you, you go here. So you have different palettes there. So it's up to you, okay? Here you can scale, okay? You can change the scale. So if you want to go from zero to four, okay? So it's up to you, rescale automatically. So it's very intuitive now. There are many options. Again, there will be a video that we're going to address those more advanced options. But the other that I want to show you, and let me go back here. So we have run in this case, okay? So see that I'm talking about these controls, okay? The selection, all these actions, addressing this, the mouse also, you can configure that in the preferences. There are many filters. Later, we're going to talk about these filters that can be very handy. Okay, so boom, boom. So let's use the basic here. Okay, so we have this. And for instance, let's say that I want to get, this is 3D, but I want to get a slice of this, okay? Normal to this plane. See here that you have this? You can slice this. However, be careful now, because that slice of the domain needs to be in the internal mesh, okay? So see, this is the internal mesh. So I need to apply that there. And see that you have that slice there. So why there? So remember that this here, our surfaces so see that if you slice this you get a line okay so that's why i chose the internal okay but you can also leave the other selection there is no problem but it's up to you okay so internal and you get that slice again you access all the information there is you want to see the uh, should be here you have it there you have this is right the square is this plane so you can disable there so the mesh is made of quads, but you see here triangular. So probably you want to disable that one. This is just applied to the slice. Deselect that one, and now this is your actual mesh, okay? So there are many options you can visit there. You can change the location also, okay? So when you are slicing, you can change the location. So this is how to create an slice. So let's see that also very often people likes to plot vectors. So here vectors, they call it glyph. Don't know why, but okay, let's use glyph. 
you select there remember that i have this auction here enable advanced auctions okay so see that the difference that you have more advanced auctions there okay so orientation so i want to use vector okay vectors you need to apply in a vector field so you only can access you here in this case that the only vector field that we have and i want to use it in the cell center so you have in the vertex of those cells so see that if i go here you can apply that vector in the vertex in the vertices or in the cell center okay so if i go here in the cell center i don't want to scale apply and here you have okay so see that it's applying the cell center if i choose this one you see that it's in the vertices i usually like to, to apply it in the cell center you can change the color so i want to put it like this and this is what we have okay then these options will serve to control this one and you can apply some scaling okay i want to scale according to the velocity and put like this and it, uh, smash okay and choosing the wrong variable should be that one and see that you have it there scale according to velocity it's up to you and also can be a different variable, not necessarily velocity. So I don't like to scale, and you have it there. So we have this. So see the eyeball, you can hide it, okay? So here you have your pipeline or all your operations. Another one that is very useful. So remember that here, as you go back, you will see here that you have the sampling where using the post-processing utility, if you recall. So we're sampling using open phone and a specific program of open phone but also you can do that same sampling using part of you so see here that in this bar here these are filters okay so these are the most basic filters and you have more advanced filters here that later we will address those but we have a very useful filter here that is this one plot over a line so see that you can define a line and then you can sa sample or <coughs> monitor the information you now that you get in that line okay so you just need to give coordinates so i will say 0 05 0 05 apply and see that you have the line there you can change the color of that line okay okay truly here okay do not show line you have it there and put it wide so see that this is the line and see here that so see first look at that when i introduce this one I split the screen in two okay so see that now you have the line here so if you want to to split here you have these commands okay so you can create new new screens there so see that this line sample and you're sampling p and u so this blue square means that this is the active view okay let me change here now this is the active view view look at the blue square square and you select here as you go here you can access what you want to plot so if you want to plot one component so see that i want to plot the x and y component of velocity here okay so this in this axis you have those components and the horizontal axis is the arc length okay this length so you can also choose different values okay so as you po put here point x the x coordinates or whatever okay point y okay it's up to you and you can add a second one so will be now this one will be the horizontal line okay so oh sorry so it should be here a slice you can choose where to put it okay so this one you put it in this this slice and it goes at 0 05 here 0 05 0 05 goals so see that it goes from 0 to 1 at 0 05 i don't want to show the line show me this you have it there and let me change the color and there we go and you access click here blue square it is active and i don't want to see this one there so see that now you see this there so this is the basic post processing okay so you press play and see that it will access in time okay so 
you can animate the solution here. Okay. So this is basic post-processing for the moment. It is more than enough for the other two tutorials that we're going to do. Remember, we have then another module that is dedicated to this, and you can do very complex sensors. So it's the one you can go to 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 those models to, to get more familiar. But you can do very, very complex things, okay? So this case is 2D. In 3D, will be exactly the same. Probably a little bit more tricky because it's 3D, but it's exactly the same. The, the, the idea is the same. So we did the sampling in Paraphon, okay? So at this point, we have an idea how to use it, okay? So everything that I show you is explained there. So see that you have all these steps, all to split views. So now let's talk about, we run the simulation, we saw it running. Okay, but we also have a, a log file. So something that very often happens that people likes to see the monitors, the residuals on a screen. So I have to say something that that can be a little bit misleading because those residuals, they are not a direct indication of the convergence or quality of the solution. Okay, so you need to, to be careful when interpreting the, the, the residuals, okay? However, yeah, it can be useful. So you have it here and a screen in text, okay? But sometimes it's difficult to follow that. So you can plot that information as well. So now here I will move to another utility, okay? So you can do it in OpenFun and if I go here to the bottom, see that you have this function object that it will save residuals. I don't like to use it, okay? I prefer to use another utility, but you, you can use it, okay? The other utility that I like to use is called Python. Okay, Python, it is a set of utilities that you can use to post-process data in OpenFone. It's not supported by the official developers, not by openfone.org, it's not directly supported. But the developers, they have a relation, so it's a, let's say we can say that it's an official tool, it works very well. But it's not distributed with OpenFund, you need to install that utility. To install that when it works with Python, okay? So the name is Python, so Python phone, okay, you get there. So you need to install. So in my case, to install that, you need to have Python 3. And this is why I told you it's important. In my case, I'm using Anaconda Python, I will load Python 3, okay, this is specific environment. And now I can use Python, uh, Python, okay? If you don't have it to install, you can just go PIP, this is a Python program to install, no, libraries, minus install Python, and that will install the, the okay, no, PIP install, it's not the minus, will install the library. In my case, it's already, already exists, but if you don't have it, you install like that, okay? So you can use Anaconda Python or you can use the Python library that, that comes with your system. It's up to you. I like to use, I have my own reasons, I like to use Anaconda Python, okay? So as soon as you install that one, and honestly, I have to tell you, Python comes with many, many small applications, but I just use it for a single one application, what is called Python Plot Washer. So, and this is important, to use this one, you need to have the log file, okay? So this is why also I recommend you always say, save those log files. So if you do like this, now this utility will plot the famous or infamous residuals. So see that you have your residuals, velocity, pressure, this is the continuity, so remember that these values needs to be small, so you see that it's small. It doesn't matter if they are positive or negative, it needs to be small. But the, the important one, let's say, is this one, residuals. So see that the residuals are going down in a monotonic way as we like, okay? So this is telling you that it's converging to a steady solution, okay? So the physics is actually steady, Okay, but the solver that you are using it is on a steady. This happens rarely. This is the section. Okay, most of the cases are truly in a steady, so you are not going to have this behavior. And probably this is why I say that it's not a good idea to rely on this one. And usually people think that always this should go down. No, okay, so you have an on a steady physics, like most of the cases, your residuals are not going to go. Are better the initial residuals because what you're looking here are initial residuals are not going to go to 10 to the minus 6 or 10 to the minus 8 or whatever, okay? So this is a section, this particular case. You have your residuals, okay? And that's all, okay? Control-C to close. And just to mention that Python plot 
watcher, you can use help and it will give you a list of actions, okay? So this, what I just say, again, you have it here, okay? I mentioned that the log files, very important, always safe, and if you are having any future problems, the first things that I'm going to ask you, please send me your log file or show me the last 10 iterations, okay? So you need to have that. So here I show you that you can use, for instance, you have this log file, there is this open phone this is an open phone command that you can use it to extract information okay so probably this is the long way and this is why i, I like to use python plot watcher okay so phone info okay let me okay i need to phone info what is phone log you have it there so see that it's create extract data for each time step for a from a log file from for graphing that's all. So you have your log file, you can go phone log, log solver, and it's extracting all that data. And it, is, it is going to create, so see that you have all your time folders. So here you have your solution, we just visualize that in, in part of you. So here you need to modify anything. But when you use phone log, see that this new directory is extracting all that information. And now you can plot this using Nuplot. So if you open this, you will see that it's just time and the variable, that's all. But if you want to use Nuplot, then it's a little bit more trickier. So you go like plot, location of the files, so it logs. I want to plot, let's say UX, and I want to use colon one and two using lines, okay? And I want to use logarithmic scale because that is plot in logarithmic, logarithmic scale. And see that you have your plot there, okay? So as you see, it's a little bit longer. So just to make it also clear how to use this, it is using, okay, probably less co confusion with lines. This is the abbreviation, okay, it's up to you. And you plot it, okay? So you choose the files that you want to plot. So for instance, I want to plot also uh, P, okay? using colon one and two i know that there are only two and by the way you see different pc here p0 p1 because you have different iterations and let me address that later you press there and see that you have it okay but see that using python it is much easier it access that and by the way this one while running you can do it if you use phone lock while, while you are running it's uh, it can be done but it requires some 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 steps so it's not very very straightforward when it comes to function object this function object that you see here received was pretty much is the same as using phone lock it will post process while it's running it will get the residuals and then you can plot it okay but you need Again, you need to open new plot and post processor files. So it's easier to use Python, okay, Python plot washer. So that is my advice. So here you have everything explained. Now the phone load, new plot, you have the basic steps here with some description, okay, the plotting. Here I'm mentioning about Python, okay. So you have two commands. You have Python plot runner that it will run the solver and plot the information, but I don't like that. I prefer to use Python plot washer that it will plot whatever is safe here, okay? And just to show you the difference, okay? So you have Python plot runner, and then you say icophone. You need to put the T whatever because the, this script will handle that, okay? So as you go, now it will plot, okay? So you have it on the fly. So many people like to do this. Uh, I have to say that also this will add a little bit overhead, okay? But it's not something that you should be worried, but it will add a little bit overhead. Okay, probably see the computing time. Now clock time was 14 seconds. Now if I run without that, Look at my my clock time is seven seconds. Okay, in this case, 
it, it is a big overhead because of small application, larger applications, not that big. However, I don't like to, to use that. I prefer to use plot, uh, Python plot washer. Okay, so just to also to, just to make it clear, what is that? And let me increase the computation time here. So see that, okay, let me put here a large time. So it will do a lot of iterations and I will put here just two. It will save only two folders. Okay, so run solver. Okay, so see that it will run for a lot of iterations and that port right, see that it's just saving two folders, the last two tiny stars. You put 10 will be the last 10. So you put zero, it will keep everything. So see that you are running and if you want to use Python plot, plot, plot washer, what you need to do is just open a new terminal window because this one is blocked. You cannot do anything because it's running a process here. So as you go, in my case, new tab, load your Python, whatever it is you are using, proceeding in my same way. So I know that I'm saving everything here. So you just go Python, plot, washer, log, icon, and that's all. So in this window, you are post-processing this you are not adding any overhead that, that, like in the previous case. And that's all. Okay. And see that you have it here. So this is how I will proceed from now on. Okay. I'm not going to use the Python plot runner because I know it at that overhead. And usually I, I prefer uh, most of the time also, I don't plot this receipt well. So, so as you see, also this one, you can use it, Python plot watcher a posteriori, you know, to post-process a posteriori, you know. As you run your simulation, you have your log file, just use it and plot everything, okay? So one of the big, big questions here, for instance, the solver will run until it reaches the final time, okay? But what if I want to stop my solver right now? There are different ways. So one is the brutal one that I don't recommend it, but it works. That while it's running, you go into the terminal and you just press Control C, you kill the process. Okay, so this is the brutal way. However, be, be careful, okay, because it will not save the last time, okay? It's, it's not recommended. So the way I, I recommend it, one is just wait until you reach the final time, but if you want to stop it before that, you can say here, a stop at, and you just, for instance, you can change the, the time. Okay, so here it will go, stop at end time, and it will reach this end time. So if you change this end time to zero, it will stop, so see that. And here, just to show you that open phone, it, 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 on the fly, you can modify all these options. You see here that you can modify it on the fly. So this is one way to do it. The other way to do it, and again, I need to put that one, that while it's running, then you say, okay, let me change this to 100. It will stop at 100, okay? Or whatever, you can change it like that, okay? The other way is this keyword, okay? You, instead of putting end time, you can go here right now, okay? So it will write the solution now. So I modify, I save it, and immediately see that it is a stop, okay? It will stop and it will save that last time step. See, precisely that last time step. Okay, so these are this is the way also I recommend you, okay? So if you don't want, if you say, okay, I want to stop my so simulation, use this option, okay? Do not use the control C or do not kill the process. So just to show you also when you run, at the beginning, open phone, up, 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 okay, more log. Open phone will give you a process ID you can kill this process ID, okay? So I'm not going into details on that, but there is an utility a, a, a command in, in, in Linux that it will let you kill a specific pro process. So you have your process there and you kill it and that's all. But it's not recommended because it's not saving your latest time set. So the, my advice, use this option right now, okay? So we we'll address that. We show that how to stop it. We show that you can modify auctions on the fly. 
So let's move, okay? And everything now that I mentioned, you have it here, Python, how to stop, so see the end time and what I just mentioned. Okay, this option also I mentioned is important, leave it to true. So this means that you can modify all the input files on the fly, okay? It's not only limited to control D, everything that you have here that can be modified, you will be able to modify that. So, we have all these actions, okay? To clean the case, we talk about font clean tutorials, okay? And then you have these actions to erase just the, the, the solution time. So you, you have there this explanation. So from time to time, you will see that I'm using this command. It's just to erase the solution, but it's not going to erase the mesh or anything that I have. Instead, you use this, it will erase everything, okay? This one, it will only erase solutions. So folder one, two, three, whatever. Okay. And the, here is an explanation, you know, the details that we went through that, that remember transfer properties, we have, you no. Know, in this case, you define your viscosity, you give the value, you have their dimensions, this is a command that you have there, it's fully dimensional, we address this, okay, so be careful, also dimensions of pressure for incompressible solvers. Okay, so we move, we explore so also block mesh, okay, later this model dedicated to this, and we're going to study more in details. But something interesting that you have here now the definition and the patches, the name of the patches that, that we gave, that when you create the mesh or import it, uh, you are going to generate a file, OpenFun is going to generate a file, and probably this is the only file that you might need to modify, not the only file related to the mesh that you might need to modify this one, boundary file. So let me open this one. So in this boundary file, what you have is the name of the surfaces. First, you have how many boundary surfaces, surfaces or patches you have where you can assign boundary conditions, okay? So we have three. This is the name. These are the names that you gave. And this is the, the base type. This information, you don't touch this. This is something internal of open form for connectivity. So for instance, let's say that I don't like this name. You can change this name here and you can call it banana. Okay. And this is the name of this new boundary surface. However, be careful that is you change the name there, you should change it also here. Okay. So now that that one was moving wall, you should change it here banana as well. So you have to be careful with that. Okay. So this is the only file related that you can modify. So this is automatically generated by OpenFOAM when you generate the mesh using block mesh, snappy, or you convert it from some external tool. It's automatically generated. And it might happen that you don't like the name. If you don't like the name, change the name. Feel free. There is no problem, OK? Do not change these options here, these three. Sometimes th this one is not compulsory. So sometimes you are not going to see in groups, but this one, M faces, star face, are, comp are compulsory. They are always there, but do not change. You also can change this. So these are these constrained patches, okay? So remember, later we're going to talk more about this. So for this case, wall means that it's a wall, okay? It can be a wall fix or a wall that is moving. In this case, kind of, this is a wall that is moving. But also here you can put a patch. So we can run this case also telling that this is a patch. I don't need, so let me erase this. I don't need this. And a patch means did it ledge. A did it ledge that you can put this and this, that's all. So the main difference will be, and also will become clear when we deal with turbulence. So if you put a wall, you will be able to use models related to, to, to turbulence, okay? So wall functions, just to say. So if you put it wall, you will be able to apply a wall function. If you put it patch, you are not able to apply wall function. So I can leave it as a wall, but for if for some reason I want to apply wall function, or I don't want to apply wall function, it should be a patch, okay? So, but that's all, okay? So we cover, so let's rerun, and you will see that it will run with no problem, okay? So let me go, let me go for one list time minus RN, it'll erase the solution. I don't want to redo the mesh. And I go icofon and it's running with no problem, okay? So be careful with, with that file, okay? So most of the time, it, out, out, of, out of the box, how you have the values are, are okay, you know, the names are okay, 
and the values that you put here are okay but later we're going to see that it might happen that you will need to change this okay but it's not that difficult so this is this is it okay so first tutorial as you see we cover a lot but now everything that we're going to do from now on it will be pretty much similar to what what, what we have done here okay so just we just introduced these basic options. Okay, so here you have the explanation what I just told you. Okay, we move here. So let, we move to these boundaries now, the boundary conditions. And what I say that you have this constraint passion. So there you have st stuff like symmetry, anti cyclic that is always the same in boundary and in the files now, zero, up, it's always the same. But then you have that fixed value, this patch. Okay, so the patch, this patch, that you define in boundary, it can be any of these types, okay? So this is where things can get a little bit confusing, okay? And what I just mentioned about the wall, so it's something very specific. So if you have a wall, this is the combination, how you should have the combination among U and P, okay? But this is a specifically to, to turbulence modeling, okay? Then you can have these others, okay? But we talk about control D, the auction. So let's talk about what auctions do we have available but because you saw there that there are many auctions and this is very important, but I will go, we're going to see. So if you open any dictionary here and or input file, let me go here, control D and let me put a word that I know it doesn't exist. So I know that banana doesn't exist in open phone it's not a variable that has been created when when it w <coughs> the developers were programming if you run open phone will complain and it will tell you that in this specific f dictionary it says here that is giving you the location so you know that existing control did this keyword doesn't exist these are the valid valid options okay so always look at your screen so let me go here, and as you put here, Mrs. Spell something, as you try to run, so it's telling you this specific dictionary in this keyword, this doesn't exist, these are your valid options. For every single keyword, okay, it will, it will give you that. So in this case, it didn't work, okay. So that keyword is, is optional. So, okay, probably I didn't save it also. Black mesh, but it's optional. That gen general is optional. Okay, so sometimes it will give you an error, means that it's compulsory. If it doesn't give you an error, it is optional. So, time precision, let me go there. So, see that it's telling you that this doesn't exist, it's expecting a expecting a floating point number, and you're giving a war, okay, and a string. So, this is it, okay. So I always if you want to know the auctions now as you go fv skin see that you miss a spell there you try to run and see that it's telling you that this doesn't exist and you see that it's always telling you the location this doesn't exist these are your auctions available okay so these are the auctions available for time discretization so this is the, i think this is the easiest way if you want to know all the the <coughs> Difficult way is reading the source code. Okay, so you need to know where it's located, where is lo where where where, <coughs> where these methods are located. So I recommend you to go using this way and probably later try to enter into the the source code. Okay, but for our purposes, I think it is okay. So when you are lost, remember you misspell something and then you try to run. It will complain and see that here you have many options okay things might get a little bit confusing so just to show you something else so among remember that here in this file constant polymesh boundary you give the name to the patch so look at what happens if you give a different name but you don't update u and p so see that we change the name of the patch but in theory you should update this one but see what happens when you don't do that you try to run see that again it's complaining it's telling you that this patch field you haven't defined that patch field in p so what you need to do is or you update this or you update this it's up to you so let let, let, let us 
let's do it in a better way okay i will call it banana i run always read the the output so see that it's telling you that there is a problem in p boundary field okay and it's telling you that banana doesn't exist that entry so we need to define for banana so i know banana i try to run it with say the same for you so you go update for you and it's running okay so you have two ways you can update here okay or you can update here it's up to you but always read the important thing is always read the screen look at what happened for instance this is compulsory so if i don't put that in entry let's see see that is it's telling you keyword type if undefined in moving world so probably this is a, a little it's a little bit difficult to understand where do you have the error because it's not telling you the file okay so sometimes it will give you a lot of information sometimes it's not telling you but you have an idea you know that okay you are missing a type in so in somewhere so you know you you, you have a, a a good clue okay so this is how you can get an idea you know of the keywords that you have in open for Okay, so for instance, let me go boundary conditions. So you misspell there, it will show you all the boundary conditions available in OpenFoam. And as I said, this is the difficult difficult part because I see that you have many boundary conditions. This creates a, a lot of confusion. And for our purposes, let's, let's focus on in fixed value, the residential boundary condition, and zero grading. With these two, with those two, we're going to, to do most of the cases. Then we have those constraints like symmetry, empty, Okay, but to but for defining no boundary condition for us, zero gradient and fixed value, it is okay. Again, if you want to know, for instance, what is this one doing? Go there for an info, and it's giving you here a description where you have the location. Okay, and then probably you can explore a little bit more the source code. But for our purposes, most of the time. We're going to use fixed value, zero gradient, and then combination of symmetry, empty, or periodic. That's all. Okay, that is more than enough to set up all cases that we're going to deal with. Okay, so here we have the suctions. Okay, what I just mentioned also. Okay, a little bit here, then will be clearer. The suction will be clearer. So you can follow this later, but this will be clearer when we address the numerics. Okay, we move here. Okay, we talk about these two optional dictionaries that for the moment we're not using, so I'm not going to comment anything about this. This one is the one used for the post-processing, okay? So remember, we did it post-processing in Paraphone uh, or Paraview, and this is how you do it using Open for Utility, okay? So see that you define in sample did how, <coughs> the, how you want to do the sampling in a line. So there are different samples that you can do. You can do it in a point, in a line, in a surface, okay? so since can can get very very complicated as well okay what i mentioned about pressure never forget this only for incompressible solvers the header we talk about this one the screen information that you have and again remember to save always the log files about function objects don't worry later we're going to talk about this function object because a lot there can be also a little bit confusing so here and this will be something constant that you are going to see in all my cases i always like to print minimum and maximum values so this is how you put it to print minimum and maximum values okay but you have many options many things but you will see that continuously i use this this function object but you can have for pressures uh, for forces whatever okay many things about the current number okay that I mentioned that uh, for the moment let's keep this one around one okay probably maximum something five and see that in this case is you run this case and you keep increasing the current number by increasing the time step see that in one point it will diverge so see that when you go something about five it will diverge okay so see that now it open for is giving you an error and this is not very easy to track this error so we're going to see this later okay so on and what i mentioned about the error output always read it now because sometimes it's telling in particular 
what is the problem okay so always read okay see, see here when you don't have the right dimension see that is gi give you this specific error okay and some final features of the dictionaries that you can use include files and stuff like that okay and also something important that you will see in the input files that sometimes the switches sometimes it's false you will read that i use false and true so they are all equivalent or oh, you can use false true off on yes no or you can use a little bit more compressed non-true okay but most of the time i will use false true but sometimes also on off but they are all equivalent okay so with the switches what i mentioned about fun info but important and then well a little bit of documentation so here at the end also you have this exercise please feel free to follow this this exercise done and try to solve it later you're going i'm going to give you the, the, the solutions at the end <laughs> the end in with eight you are going to have the solution but try to do it and we can discuss also in the in the q a sessions so the sense that i'm missing here is just to increase the the just to show you how the solver crash when we increase delta t okay so let me recall something so it's just a very simple case but we can make it a very 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 long okay so let me run run solver okay so see that i have a problem bum, 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 here okay and actually let me change the the, the, here now the dimensions now just to show you the error so see that when you don't have the right dimensions will give you an error so be careful because as you get the idea that you will do kind of a copy and paste now if you want to do a new simulation you know that you have a tutorial somewhere and you copy and paste but be careful when you copy and paste it might be that you copy the wrong files or you're missing something so be careful always check double check everything so let's run and increasing this sir here so let me put here zero five okay so let's see what happens so, so see that we increase the delta t and see that now cfl is larger we have a faster solution so previously it was like five seconds now one second okay so this is the idea you increase your delta t it will increase your cfl number because delta t the times this is directly related to to the cfl number as you see here okay it's directed directly related <coughs> to the the delta t okay directly the CFL number is directly related to this delta T, but also to the mesh space. And so finer meshes will have an influence. So use it if you want to increase your CFL number, you increase delta T. Or if you want to decrease it because it's better to decrease, decrease this one, or you increase this one. But usually you control with the delta, delta T, you, could, you, you control your CFL number. Okay, so see that now if I go to zero one, it's running see your dcfl number 1.68 it still is stable super fast okay but if i go now to one sec so each time step is one second so this is a very large time step and see that it is diverging in four iterations okay so this is the problem that the solvers are implicit meaning that there is no constraint in time step however it's not a good idea to go with very large time step because it might happen that it will diverge and in this case see that the, you have a very large time step and it's diverging i know that i can make this solver converge but to make it but it's not a good idea you know to make it converge you need to increase the number of iterations you see here that you are iterating to get better computation of gradients and that translate you no know, in more you know, and a costly you no know, time step and also as the time step is, is, is very large you are lo losing accuracy but what i want to point here out is that see that this error this is not quite easy to to understand okay so we know here that what we were experimenting with time step so this is related to time step but sometimes you get here these errors and it's tricky to understand so this is why it's very important to get the log file and to know your setup because by looking at to the setup you might immediately know <coughs> see what what is the problem okay so see that it goes zero five zero five maybe will diverge also see that is diverging also but see that is lower the 
<coughs> the CFL is lower, but it still diverges. So in this should converge, and just to show you that I can make it a conversion, this is something that we will address in, in the numerics. I just can go here and let me do here well, pa, 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 like this. So I'm increasing the number of of iterations and see that it's converging. But see that it, I'm doing more iterations. See that you have three iterations. So the cost of each of these times it might be larger than using a smaller. So it's a it's a compromise. Okay. So if I use a smaller time set, I will need to iterate more. But I know that the cost of this loop is very low because I just need to do one iteration. Okay, so see this, just to see here, see that I'm doing just one iteration. So the cost per iteration will be very low. If I increase here, now it is converging, but see that you have three iterations, so this will have a large cost. So it's a compromise, okay, but the main takeaway is that be careful because having large CFL numbers as you see here is not a good idea. Okay, many times that <clears throat> that is the reason why the solver is diverging a large time step. And now that I run this one, let's do the sampling, just sampling and see here that we have a, a good solution, very similar to the previous one. Okay, there will be some differences, larger times, but see that still we have a good solution. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so I think at this point we address, we cover it a lot. Okay, I hope I didn't confuse you as a, a, a at a higher level. In any case, we have two more tutorials to address, and we're going to revisit all the concepts we're going to the next one we're going to move to a fully 3d case but that's all for this case okay thank you for your attention and see you next time bye